Hey everybody and welcome back to Hatch 2.0. My name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to export SVGs in Hatch. And there's a couple ways of doing it. This is Hatch version 2. I also have the Corel that works right here in with it. So the first thing I'd like to show you guys, let me get a new design. When you digitize applique, and I'm just going to hack something out here. I'm going to show you how it works with an EMB file, only a native EMB file. That's the only way you can do it. So you have to create the applique yourself and Hatch will read the codes in it. And that's how we move forward. So there is a new button and it's over here export cutting so if you have an emb you can do this and you can export select select objects only and you can change it into an svg and it's going to take your cutting line and make an svg for you so it's nice and simple as long as you're creating it yourself so a couple clicks you're done what happens if you want to make a cutting line for a purchase design like this one this is a cute candy cane holder from embroidery library now embroidery library does give you die lines so that you know you can do it that way but say you don't have a die line so i'm just kind of making worst case scenario and you want to make one so the first thing we want to do and this is assuming too that you have corel graphics that works together with hatch it's really convenient that way again there's other ways of doing it you don't have to do it this way i just find i have corel and it's super easy so the first thing i'm going to do is delete everything except for my cut line so this is uh, running stitches and it's going to stitch out first and that's where you place your fabric and then you go further from that before we do that i want to write down the numbers because sometimes svgs can come out to be you know too big or too small so the numbers we want is right here so 3.15 Make sure you write it down while you're doing it, or you can flip back, I guess, but I just found this easier by 3.8, and you might wanna make them a little bigger too. But the first thing we wanna do is right up here, we wanna convert embroidery to artwork, and we're gonna click on that, and we can do vector or virtual embroidery, but we want vector for this one. There we go. Make sure you don't save. You don't want to save anything. You'll mess up your file. Now what it's doing now is opening up Corel for me and uh, that'll make it easier to do the SVG quite nicely. So we've exported it. You just got to give it a minute for Corel to open up inside, inside um, Hatch and that makes it easier. So let's do um, file and export gingerbread man cutting file run run as fast as you can make sure you pull the drop down menu and we're gonna find SVG and that's called gingerbread man cut export and all that is good you can preview it if you want so awesome that's all it is and it just takes a minute let's export it to JPEG and see what that turns out. We might need it as well. So, so far easy. Hopefully you guys are following along. Let's find the right one, JPEG. There we go. So we're gonna call it gingerbread cut. So GB cut, so we can tell the difference. One's a JPEG, one isn't. So let's see what it does here. Custom JPEG yeah that's good let's just leave it how it is all right let's not be too complicated and this is what it looks like when you get into Cricut let's go to new project and let's go to upload and you can see I've played with gingerbread we'll make sure we won't pick the same one drag and drop let's browse and we remember I put it on the desktop and there's our JPEG one and this one, because I don't have it assigned, that we know because we called it Gingerbread Men Cut. There we go. And we're going to open it. And hey, looking good. 
Let's go down here to the bottom right. Let's go to save. And this is the one I just did. Let's insert images. Now, the problem is, and a lot of time with Cricut, it either comes in too big or too small, and it kind of causes some issues. That's why I said, make sure you write down the exact size. So this is why it's taking so long to come in, but that's okay. We can just wait for it a little bit. You can always make it smaller, I suppose, if you wanted to. So look, we can see right here. Now we don't see anything. So where is it? Okay, well, I'll tell you where it is. It's huge. It's monstrously huge. So we want to change it. Uh, to be a little bit smaller. So we'll make it 3.15. These are the numbers that I wrote down. And we want 3.8. Yep, that's about right. So awesome. So hit enter. Hey, it's not anywhere. Uh, that's because it's way over, way over. So all you have to do is type in zero and type in zero and hit enter and there is your gingerbread man and we've put the size in correctly and uh there you go so all you have to do is click on make it and boom there he is cut it out now if you wanted to make it a smidge bigger you can uh depending if you're going to use goody stick on it or anything like that um it depends what will be easier for you so Awesome. That is how you use SVGs and get it to your Cricut Maker or whatever Cricut machine you have. So easy so far. Okay, so I have opened up the Silhouette Studio. Now, on this computer, I just have the Basic Edition, and I know on the Basic Edition, it will not read SVGs. So the Basic Edition is the free one. If you want to, you know, use SVGs, you have to pay, I think it's like $99 or something, or it used to be, for the Business Edition. However, there still is a really good workaround, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to Fox file and we want to go to merge and that is just going to bring in a file rather than opening it up i just think it's easier this way so if you remember it's a jpeg we also saved it just in case we need it i kind of knew we would so let's bring in our gingerbread guy so give it a second to load and if you notice with the jpeg it's pretty much the correct size so all you have to do is go over here and we're going to trace it so select trace area and it didn't show up very well so you can play around with it to show up better a better idea would be to make the lines a little bit thicker on it okay i fiddled around with this a little bit and i got a decent cut so i'm going to suggest when you make the G jpeg in corel that you make it thicker so it'll be able to see it better because we might have some issues so this is our jpeg we don't need you anymore jpeg thank you that's good now this is our cut file so there's a few things we can do to hopefully make it a little bit better we want to open the line style pat pattern and we want the line to be solid and we want it to be a little thicker. See, you can see the problems we have here. So this isn't gonna work. This is my conclusion for this one. So let's go back and make the JPEG a little thicker. So I just minimized it and all you have to do to make the lines a little bit thicker is go here where the little pen is and we are going to change it. We can do it about that thick. We might have a little problem here, but we should be able to fix it. Let's see if we make it a quarter, if that's thick enough. That might be good enough. So again, we have to export it. Sometimes you have to do a little trial and error till you, till you get it right. So we wanna call it uh, GB cut two to make sure we get the right one. So we've exported it. Let's see, CMYK, color high. We're just gonna leave everything the way it is. And I think that's gonna be much, much better. So let's minimize that. This is the first one that we tried. So let's go to file, merge, and we're gonna do this all over again. GB cut two, you can tell even by the picture, it looks even better. So that is what you want. That's gonna give us a much better cut. So let's go to trace 
select trace area. There we go. And we want to make it a little bit thicker, I think. Solid fill is fine. So again, we have to move around. We want all as much yellow to show up. Let's try despeckling it and trace. And it looks like we got a fantastic cut. So you see the difference between the two? Big difference. This is not going to cut very well at all. This is going to cut really well. So the nice part about this is that it's easy to do. You just got to make sure your lines are thick enough. And then if you want to add a little bit to it to inflate it, you can just inflate it or type the numbers in. So then we are ready to send it to the cutter and you just go send and it set it up and you can send it over. But you can see it's going to cut a really nice line. All right, so if you're using the Brother software, it is super easy to get this done. So we are going to import from your computer. Now we know that the JPEG worked really well, but let's try the Gingerbread Man SVG and let's bring it in. And uh, that's about all you have to do for this. They make it easy. Now you can inflate it a little bit if you want. But basically after that, you just have to export FCM file and save it. And now you're done. How easy is that? Or you can send it directly to your machine. I don't have mine on, so it wasn't an option. But that's all you have to do. And it's just going to cut the outside of it. And it's fantastic. It's fantastic. So, so that is how to work with SVGs and of course JPEGs if you have to either way to get some nice cutting files for your cutters here inside Hatch and Silhouette and Cricut. So happy cutting, happy appliqueing. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.